Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to another Warcraft replay here. And, ooh, yikes. I keep forgetting to turn the, the volume and my headphones down every time I cast, but, uh, yeah, uh, we have an Orc vs. Night Elf matchup here on the NetEase ladder. And this is going to be featuring Life as, uh, what color is it? He's blue, okay, okay, this is correct. Um, yep, Life as the blue Night Elf player on the top right. And we'll be facing off. Uh, he will be facing off against Focus, the red orc player in the bottom left. Um, I actually I moved the text that indicates the patch over here, and it seems like I have to move it back to its original place. It seems like it maybe moved a little too far to the right. Uh, but either way, map is on Concealed Hill. Uh, still not too familiar with this map, so uh, yeah just go along with it. It seems like it's going to be an Ogre Warrior start here for life. Uh, the your other alternative is either this turtle camp or... Actually, that's pretty much it. The Goblin Lab is pretty far away, to be honest, but... Uh, it probably could still be completed by a Night Elf player. Obviously, humans do have your it a lot better, completed. and Orc and Undead probably won't start that first. Uh, we are going to be having a blade mask coming out for focus. Meanwhile, life just sticking with the same old keeper of the grove here. Uh, despite the recent changes to his entangle uh, cast range, as well as I believe something to do with force of nature, uh, I can't remember to be honest. Whether it was mana cost or duration or just weak retreats in general, I actually kind of forgot. Uh, Mainly because uh, uni has university has started and it's it's kicking full gear, so being a little preoccupied and finding time to actually upload. But uh, yeah, Ogre Warrior Camp will be taken out here, and the Claws of Attack will be picked up for the Keeper. As yeah, the remainder camp should be cleared out. I don't think this will be a level two. The Keeper will need at least one other kill, I would say, or so. Our warriors have engaged the enemy. But, yeah, Blademaster already got himself a little bit of experience there. It seems like he also taken out uh, just the Ogre Warrior himself, hoping to maybe pick up a juicy, juicy item. Unfortunately, he did Our pick up a circlet, so... Uh, did get the bargain bin out of that deal, but... Uh, regardless, Blademaster can still work very well with that circlet. He can also pick one up from the shop if he needs to as the Keeper is going to find himself Our a free grunt thanks to that entangle and uh, yeah, Treant's able to keep him surrounded as well so just an easy kill right there. Playmaster went for the crab. I'm not sure what the crab drops. It doesn't look like it dropped any items whatsoever as the Playmaster is going to pick up his second circlet and probably needs to come back home to try and defend this as the Orc Roar is being attacked but it is going to get completed at least. Alright, here's the Blade Master. Uh, I didn't actually see him in Viz, that is kind of weird. Trient's going straight after the Orc Bar regardless of the uh, completion, and the Peons are going to try their best to uh, yeah, try and keep that alive. Speed Skull was used, and funnily enough that is actually uh, making those Peons kind of overworked, but at, at least the Blade Master is going to chase the Keeper out. And even better, he was able to force the TP scroll to be burnt, as Keeper, unless you, like, constantly entangle the Blade Master, which I don't think he had the necessary mana to, uh, the Blade Master is going to most likely get the kill, and, uh, yeah, was forced to burn that TP early. Blade Master running around here as, I guess he's looking for easy creep camps to take out, so he can pick up additional items, but uh, yeah, so far it doesn't look Our too good for the, the Blade Master's prospects here. Merchant Camp is going to get taken out, the High Priest is going to be the main target, as obviously uh, healing and inner fire is probably a good thing to take out early. Ogre Magi is going to get taken out, BM is not spotted by the dust, as the Wand of Illusion is going to get picked up for the Keeper. 
Blame has just arrives, but a little too late there. Won't be able to get any sort of creep jack. Upgrade finished. Uh, moon, uh, Shadow Meld is going to be used on those low hit point archers to prevent them getting picked off by the Blame Master, but I think the Blame Master is just going to go after the Keeper regardless. No TP scroll replacement just yet, but uh, yeah, uh, it is kind of hard to outrun uh, something with Ready four feet. Rule. And without boots, uh, it's going to be really difficult for the Blade Master to uh, outrun the Keeper. We are having constant freezes, I'm not entirely sure why, but uh, the Blade Master does get an Archer for his troubles. He is going to take a bit of damage thanks to that uh, Acid Bomb. Acid Bomb? Acid Flask? Acid Bomb. Uh, but it is the nerfed Acid Bomb, so uh, there is that a little bit. But so far, life's playing like... Uh, the patch hasn't actually happened. Uh, Keeper Alchemist is still apparently the thing to do in a Night Elf game. Although I believe the Alchemist did get hit as well with the patch because uh, not only Acid Bomb get reduced, I think. Maybe Chemical Rage got touched as well? I don't actually remember. Um, I think it's just Acid Bomb actually. I might just, just be a. Uh, out of my mind here as another acid bomb is going to be put onto that blade master he did get entangled as well and the archers are going to go for the surround no tp score remember for the blade master uh, he does have wind walk but the dust uh, the entangle is going to keep him revealed keeper should have dust no he actually doesn't uh, so the blade master is actually going to be able to uh, get out of that surround i'm surprised i could have sworn he only used the dust once and that was uh, during this uh, Gollum Merchant camp, but it seems like he did use it before. Either way, Shadowhunter coming out, Sacred Hero for Focus, is going to keep that Blade Master alive with a heal first. So, not ideal, because you would want Hex to make it easier for the Shadowhunter to farm by himself, but uh, obviously the surround did kind of call for the need to level up healing first. Uh, we should be at tier 2 for both sides. We do have a Sparrow Lodge placed down with the Bestiary, which is rather odd. Uh, most of the times we will see Bestiary Turin Totem nowadays, since the Sparrow Walkers did move over to the Turin Totem. But now we are going to be focusing on a couple of Shamans, and we are going to stick with the Raider front for the uh, for the front line. But Shamans is um, an interesting choice. Kind of unfortunate when you are going to deal with mass dryads, which it does seem like Life is going to go for. Life does like his mass dryad uh, uh, playstyle, and uh, that is going to be really good against those shamans because shamans, I believe, do have uh, magic attack types, so they aren't able to actually fight back against those dryads at all. Raiders are kind of have to be relied on there, as we do have a hex onto the keeper, Ogre Lord. Who is it going to go towards? It doesn't look like the Ogre Lord is being paid attention to whatsoever as the Goblin Alchemist is being in snare, uh, in snare trap there, but with only one Raider on the ground. Uh, that trap isn't going to last for that long, and Tangle is going to prove that it is the much superior uh, option, but we do have the Shamans using their Purge to try and dispel that as best they can. Yeah, sadly not, not good enough. Purge also has the slowing effect, which is Kind of a double-edged sword when you're kind of dealing with uh, Entangle there. So there is that. High Priest doing work, actually healing up the Ogre Lord from red health all the way up to about 70-80%-ish. Uh, but the Ancient of War is now out and that is going to be pretty easy tanking there. Did we actually have a... Okay, that was a really shaky shockwave coming in from the Ogre Lord. Actually able to, uh, I think, destroy the Ancient of Wonders as well from from life. He didn't actually react in time to cancel it, because he probably didn't expect that to come out at all. Um, Hood of Cunning is going to be the item of choice for the Alchemist there, that is going to be plus 4 intelligence and uh, and agility. Not the best uh, item. I think this would be kind of the weakest uh, dual stat item in the game for most heroes. Obviously intelligent heroes, uh, uh, not intelligent heroes, agility heroes would prefer this. But uh, definitely not the Alchemist. Shadow Hunter. Uh, actually, never mind. That was the Shaman Self part. But regardless, Focus is going to be a little bit caught out. I'm not sure if he actually prefers this fight at all. He is down about 11 supply. He might have to hire up a couple of mercenaries here. 
is going to pick up the Shredder, but is that going to be enough versus this Mass Dryad slash Archer crit? Shamans can only attack those Archers and Heroes there as the Dryads are making quick work out of that Goblin Shredder. Keeper is going to hit that level 4 and that is going to bring out the level 2 Force of Nature there. Additional Shreans are going to be produced, but with the Purge that is going to uh, quickly dispel at least one of those Shreans there. Uh, Blade Master is kind of low health. He did he did get forced to use a health block there, but uh, he's actually able to pick up enough archers and dryads to even up the supply. It seems Shadow Hunter is out of mana, so he needs to be a little careful there. But regardless, it does seem like the Blade Master is going to pick up a couple of freebies during the Orcs retreat. Uh, rather bold for for life to actually continue uh, going after this fight. Dryad is going to get ensnared and most likely killed off. We do have the Alchemist, very very low health, but uh, no focus fire just yet. Purge proc or purge is going to be cast there. Chemical Rage for the Alchemist, and he is going to get out of dodge thanks to that additional movement speed. Speed Scroll, however, is going to try and counteract that hex onto the Alchemist, and that is most likely going to be a Dead hero? Okay, I'm really, really apologize about these freezes here. I actually have no idea what the cause is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Shadow Hunter. He's gonna try and run away. Zeppelin even hired up by the Triads of Life, so uh, Ze uh, Zeppelin has been denied for Focus's side. Blame Master also extremely low health. Reveal is gonna be used to try and kill that Blade Master regardless of the Wind Walk, but it does seem like he is going to get out of there with only a sliver of health. Raider on the other hand is not so fortunate, and maybe even the Grunt, so... Yeah, Focus losing a lot of units, uh, kind of needlessly, but he is able to keep his Blade Master and Shadow Hunter alive, so it might be a worthwhile trade over the Alchemist there. It's just, uh, yeah, he's nowhere near... Uh, recovered, I, I guess, compared to his opponent. He is obviously gonna do well later on since he does have a second base mining. But that's only if life chooses not to uh, yeah, go for another attack very soon. Moonwell is gonna be completely used up, except for this one, obviously. Our warriors have uh, engaged the enemy. Still plenty of dryads available. I'm not sure if we're gonna keep with that. Uh, Shaman comp here because Dryads just seemingly uh, do so well against them that it seems like Focus is just gonna go for Raiders and Grunts it seems. Uh, I am still... I'm curious to see what else gets added here, if any additions are gonna be made, but Raiders Grunts do seem like they get kited pretty well by mass Dryads. Research finished. So yeah, it's going to be a bit of a weird one here. Obviously, Mass Wyverns seem a little too ambitious, especially since, I mean, life has already st uh, stacked up so many Dryads already that it seems like it is just seemingly catching up to a Lost Race already. Expansion has been spotted and it is most likely going to be taken down very soon unless Focus has something to say about this. Dryads going straight after the Peons instead as piercing damage is not so great of a sieging tool there but killing uh, Peons for free is definitely worthwhile. Doesn't seem like Focus is too worried about that expansion just yet. Shadowhunter does have the TP scroll but in all honesty like what could he do right now? He is. Uh, actually going to channel that TP scroll, it's going to be risky as he is going to go TP right into the thick of things here. We do have the Wisps just completely dispelling, trying to wipe out the mana pools of those red units there, but is that going to be enough? Healing scroll is going to be used by the Keeper as he is in hold up to try and prevent the Blame Master going after him. Uh, supply is favoring focus a little bit, but not too much there. Actually, never mind, it goes up to a 7 supply difference. As we do have the Blame Master chunk down quite a bit, he is going to go straight after the Alchemist though, and that might be a bit of a problem for life, but it does seem like he is slowly wearing down his opponents. Most of those Raiders are down to the red health bars, and uh, haven't seen too much Zippo Micro here. Life is finally doing some Zippo Micro. And uh, he might be able to save his alchemist if he can. Nope, the snare trap is going to keep him. 
Yeah, yeah, it's just gonna end up dead. I don't... Uh, yeah. These freezes are kind of... making it rather, uh... anticlimactic. It, it probably has something to do with my monitor being... uh, more than 60 hertz refresh rate, but... I'm using my second monitor, which is at 60, so it really shouldn't be having this freezing problem. It could just be my control, my computer is being overused, but I literally have no other programs on, so I have absolutely no idea what the cause is. We are going to have the blame for taking out a triad once again. That is going to put life down to uh, no upkeep, so probably does prefer that a little bit. We need to be careful not to give too much experience over to the other side there as the Glade Master is slowly becoming a bit of a problem. We are going to have once again another Instead Trap onto the Alchemist there and that is going to be the Alchemist down for the second time in the game. Dryads are going to try and revenge by going after those low, uh, very slow units. And that is going to be level 6 over to Keeper. I did not actually realize he already hit 5. But level 6 does seem like it is going to be a big deal. Um, thankfully, Tranquility can be cancelled with the Ensnare, but honestly, Focus doesn't have that many um, Raiders to spare. He is going to use that Ensnare onto the Dryad there, but the Keeper doesn't exactly have mana for the Tranquility, so he won't be able to show it just quite yet. But with those Dryads, they are slowly, slowly just killing off any unit that gets way too close. Blade Master is going to get another crit down, and he is so close to that level 5. Um, he might be able to get it with this stride kill here. Zeppelin not being utilized too, too greatly. This is one of the first times I've seen a pro player actually neglect, the, neglect uh, Zeppelin Micro too, too much. And that is going to be level 5 over to the Blade Master. We do have a Demolisher coming out for focus as well. He needs to be careful not to get overrun by those Treants. But those Dryads are going to slowly, slowly die from the bombardment of that Catapult. Dryad. It seems like it's gonna bite the dust there and tangle. Uh, its snare has been cast, but the Blade Master is kind of low to uh, keep being proactive here. The Monster is gonna do a whole boatload of damage since those Dryads are clumped up. But the Treants, uh, oh, no, they actually don't go after the Monster. And snare onto the Keeper. Zeppelin is gonna pick it up as soon as the Ensnare wears off there. Thankfully, uh, that Zeppelin is not the target of those Raiders and Snares, and the Treants actually being left behind and trying to take out the uh, any stragglers that they can. They were able to take down all of the Raiders, and going after that Demolisher is definitely priority number one, but with the Shaman out, that is going to be kind of difficult to do. Another Purge could come in, but uh, nope, and Snare is going to be enough for that. Yikes. Uh, Keeper barely able to survive with, uh, uh, the great at the time, less than 100 health, and uh, Our sacred grove is being desecrated. yeah, Our Alchemist finally being decided to be revived here. Alchemist hasn't been too uh, highly impactful uh, just yet. Keeper, outdoors. hopefully with enough mana, we'll be able to try and contribute with that tranquility, but honestly, he does kind of need like a invuln potion to prevent being uh, ensnared. Either way, uh, we are going to have yet again another attack come down and stay onto the Zeppelin. Thankfully, nothing is in there, so um, yeah, that is not necessarily a loss. Blade Master needs to be extremely careful. Thankfully, he does have a very powerful heal. I believe that is level three healing wave from the Shadow Hunter to keep it topped up. But yeah, Dryads. Honestly, if Life plays this a lot better, he could just slowly. Slowly strangled the opponent away from actually progressing, but uh, he's not rather uh, mindful of his micro to be honest. His dryads are taking a lot of free damage from those demolishers, and he isn't necessarily focus firing the right targets to be honest. Now, the false nature is going to come down with the blame master coming from behind, hopefully, take down these low hit point dryads there, and once again, demolishers are going to go after another volley. Uh, Treants were able to take down one of the two Demolishers there as it seems like the Raiders and Shamans are going to be the next target. Another Demolisher is going to pop out, but right in front of those Treants might not be such a good idea. Another Pulse Nature is going to come down and life is slowly over, uh, overwhelming his opponent with those freebies. Another 
Dryad is going to bite the dust there. Rather weird positioning for those Dryads. I don't think they can get out of those trees. As uh, Treants are looking for, I think, just the last Raider there. But the Raider is going to play Ring Around Rosie with those Treants. As we do finally have uh, all of the demolishes taken out. But is that going to be uh, enough of a window for life to take advantage of? Uh, the supplies for both sides are pretty low, and that is rather surprising to, uh, considering how long this game has gone on for so. Um, 26 versus 34, this expansion was taken down earlier, so yeah, focus. I mean, he was down on supply pretty much, even with an expansion, without an expansion this time around. Uh, I can only imagine how much more difficult it is going to be for him. Red Tree Camp is going to be finally started for life and this item is hopefully impactful. Could be a high tier summon item like uh, another red drake for himself. Furball uh, talismans might be nice as well. Red Blade Master thank uh, thankfully for life is not uh, able to attack air units because he does not have the purge bowl but uh, he will be able to pick up the fluid accuracy regardless. That would have been such a huge DPS increase for life because Mass Dryads are obviously ranged units, they could have taken advantage of that uh, heal of that 10% damage buff as much as they would. But no, it is picked up by uh, Focus's Blade Master, and it seems like it was sold for that instant uh, 200 gold there. So, yeah, not too careful with that item drop to be honest, but uh, he might go for the second Drake Camp if he uh, is allowed. Alright, both sides slowly uh, replenishing their army here. 36 for focus, 47, uh, 46 for uh, life. Ah, the great outdoors. Still pumping out mass dryads as we are not really pumping out anything for um, for focus because his expen or his main gold mine is finally worn off as well. I believe life is as well. Our so yeah, engaged. both sides are kind of struggling in resources now that uh, the main gold mines have been completed. But this might just be the last side to be honest. 36 for focus, 47, uh, 46 for life. Uh, Bladestorm is going to come through and that does affect the Dryads there because that is pretty much a physical ability and that kind of wiped out most of those Dryads. That 10 supply advantage that life had got completely destroyed by such a good uh, Bladestorm from, uh, from focus. Thankfully no lag there, we were able to see such a beautiful blade storm coming down and yeah, Keeper of the Grove is going to try and Tranquility up. Unfortunate that he wasn't able to do it during that blade storm, but I don't think he was able to out damage the blade storm with his Tranquility. Blade Master actually gets taken down, bit of a whoopsie there from Focus, but I don't think that is going to matter too too much as the Keeper is going to be following very closely. Um, as I say that, that is a lot of trains down on the ground, and Snare is going to be cast onto the Keeper there. And can the Shadow Hunter actually turn this around? All of a sudden, uh, there's not that many units for Focus's side either. Uh, Hex is going to be cast onto the Keeper there. Only 50 health to go, but he is getting so close to that Moonwell. Oh, that is going to be finally Keeper down gone. for the game. Uh, level 7 onto the Shadow Hunter there, but... He's kind of by himself. Thankfully, those treants are going to wear out very soon, and it's just Keeper versus uh, Keeper versus Alchemist. We had Focus actually leave the game. What? <clears throat> he could have totally won that. What? I don't know why he actually quit. Uh. Wow. It's despite that. Really, really good blade storm and killing the keeper. Focus still left the game first. That is definitely an odd choice, but hopefully, you guys enjoyed that very last fight. Sorry for the constant lag spikes. I actually have no idea what the problem is, but yep, thankfully, the last fight did not actually suffer. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys again uh, whenever.